The following is a presentation of the Vol Network. Closed captioning provided by the University of Tennessee full-time MBA program. Learn, transform, lead. It all starts here. This is Tennessee. I want the whole city of Knoxville to know that it's football time in Tennessee. A passion that knows no equal. The heart and soul of the volunteer state. Show me you want to run the football. And all gets to the outside. Touchdown, Tennessee. Wow. For the next 60 minutes, you're tuned to Vol Network coverage of the Tennessee Volunteers. Football rewards those who wear your opponent out psychologically and physically. The most celebrated of traditions. Yeah. When you step on the field, there must be a sense of purpose. Come on, come on. The pass is going to be caught. Unbelievable catch. Maggie goes down there to the 23-yard line. Let's go. I've been waiting for this one. Touchdown, Tennessee, to pick hour. I want to win for you. Welcome to the Butch Jones Show, hosted by Tennessee head football coach Butch Jones and the Vol Network's Bob Kessling. Brought to you by... The Big Orange Debit Card, only from the official bank of the Vols, First Tennessee. By your local Ford dealer, Tennessee Saturdays, built Ford tough. By Dish, never miss a moment of Vol action. Catch the Vols on Dish, proud partner of Tennessee Athletics. By Farm Bureau Insurance, with agents in more communities than any other insurer, Tennessee turns to Farm Bureau Insurance, the official insurance of the Vols. The Butch Jones Show. It was a big night for the Tennessee football program Saturday night in Nashville as the Tennessee Volunteers beat Vanderbilt 24-17. And with that win, Tennessee earns bowl eligibility. Coach Jones, congratulations. A big night for your football program. Well, it was a very big night and very proud of our players. And I thought it was a microcosm of the entire season, the resiliency, the perseverance that had to be shown in this game. We had injuries all over the board, and our players responded. And also, thank you to Vol Nation for really creating a home field advantage for us. And again, just proud of everyone in our football organization. We talk about being all aligned in everything that we do, and we're all aligned. And of course, the goal from the start of the season was to make it to a ball game, get to six wins. And I think somebody actually predicted that early in the season, you might do that. You thought this team was going to get to a bowl game. You had a confidence in them from the start. Well, great confidence in them. And they've shown great resiliency and continue to get better and better and better. And we knew we had a tough stretch. But if we just focused on the process, and we spoke about digging for gold, digging for gold every single day. And a lot of times people quit when success is right there. And uh, we even had a shovel on the sideline. But again, we had some individuals step up, impact the football game, and again, very proud of everyone. You know, you look back to the South Carolina game, three minutes to go, you're down two scores. A lot of things could have gone wrong for this football team, but they fought back and they fought back since then. That was really a growth period for this team. Monumental growth period, Bob. And uh, we're learning how to win. And you know, winning is very, very fragile. And learning how to close games out. We didn't play our best football uh, tonight at Vanderbilt. However, we found a way to close the game out, a football game, get victory number six, and now we're going to a bowl game. We'll talk about that. We'll take you to the locker room. We'll show you all the highlights from Tennessee's big one over Vanderbilt next on the Butch Jones Show. It's time to honor the Adidas Vol Scholar of the Week. This week, we recognize Todd Kelly Jr. The freshman is pursuing a degree in biomedical engineering. I chose it because I want to go to medical school. Um, after college if that opportunity um, comes up. And so biomedical engineering, I looked into that and I stuck with it. So far, so good. Much like he followed his father's footsteps to Tennessee, Kelly also wants to work in the medical field with the goal of becoming an orthopedic surgeon. Um, when the team doctors and team surgeons, the trainers go out there, you know, check up on the guys and, you know, they're with them through therapy, um, you know, any surgeries they have to do. and. You see that athlete, you know, go from injured to becoming back to 100% again and be, being able to perform and, you know, just knowing that you had a, you know, a say in that is pretty awesome to see. Congratulations to this week's Vol Scholar of the Week, presented by Adidas, the official footwear and apparel provider of the Vols. 
Introducing one of the newest and most unique products in collegiate licensing. IDW is now offering commercial grade Power T refrigerators for your office, man cave, and tailgate. Featuring high quality LED interior lighting and an illuminated glass door, this item is sure to impress. They light up, they lock up, and most importantly, keep your beverages cold. Now available in two sizes. Order yours at IDWlicensing.com. strong VFL stickers on for Eric Berry uh, due to the diagnosis he received earlier this week uh, just to show our support for him uh, so all the guys are going to be wearing this sticker on their helmet today it's just an extremely humbling thing you know uh, I really didn't expect I didn't really didn't I, didn't I really didn't expect them to be honored in any kind of way so just the fact that they did it and the way they did it is just kind of you know, humbling to me you know, I talked to my brother and I saw that he was okay. You know, I got a lot of support uh, from the fans as well as coaches, friends, and you know, <clears throat> turn the week around and you know, it was basically just like a regular week. So, you know, he's a strong person and you know, I talked to him a lot and I mean, I just saw that he was okay and if he wasn't worried, I'm not worried. It's a great feeling. Like I said, um, fan support and you no. Know, just knowing that you have so many people behind your back and knowing that it's bigger than just football, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously a great feeling. Tennessee Willow's special decals for Eric Berry, something that the coaching staff, and I know you talked about, just to honor Eric and his fight he's got ahead of him. Well, it's all about being a vault for life, and the Berry family means so much to us, and obviously Eric continues to be in all of our thoughts and all of our prayers, and obviously Evan and Elliot. So again, once you're a vault, you're always a vault. Did you talk to Evan and Elliot a little bit about, because sometimes you've got the emotion of the family, but also they've got to stay focused. They've got to do that balancing act. I did, but really our players did a tremendous job. They've been there for them every stretch of the way, and uh, they're very, very resilient kids, and they understand how do you represent your brother, you represent your brother in your preparation, your play on the field. And again, just a tremendous, tremendous family. And if there's anyone capable of winning this battle, it'll be Eric Berry. And our prayers are with Eric Berry and his entire family on this fight he's got ahead of him. When we come back, we'll take you to the locker room, show you the celebration after Tennessee beat Vanderbilt. The Butch Jones Show is being brought to you by Verizon, America's largest and most reliable network. Verizon, official wireless provider of the Tennessee Volunteers. By UT Medical Center, Tennessee's hospital. UT Medical Center, wisdom for your life. By the natural gas utilities and pipeline companies in Tennessee. Natural gas. And by Food City, the tailgating headquarters of all fans everywhere. Food City value every day. This game was a direct indicator of the entire season. Adversity, resiliency, and there was no way Tennessee football was going to be denied. Guess what we just found today, man? Go! Go! It's just amazing, man. It's, it's unreal. I mean, when the, when, the, when the game ended, man, and it, it became real, you know what I mean, not just a dream, and I mean, it's a great feeling. I said I, I didn't want my career to end 
right here tonight on this field. And I mean, we get into a whole nother month with my brothers, man, and just have a good time. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Um, having been to one my whole career is at Tennessee, and uh, just to experience it now, I'm ready to. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to experience it. I don't know how it feels. So. Uh, it's amazing. It's, it's you know everything I hoped it would be. Um, you know, coming back this season, you know, for what happened in the first game, you know, I wanted to make it worthwhile. I wanted to make it, you know, something I can remember and everybody else can remember as a foundation for this team. And uh, I think this is the best way that I could go out personally. Coach, I don't know who was yelling louder in the celebration. Was it the seniors for getting to a bowl game or the freshmen for getting them there? Well, it was a very, very special moment inside that locker room. And when you win, it's very, very important, important and special. And so to be able to witness that and see the kids really, everyone was exhausted. It's probably the most exhausted I've ever been after a game. Just, you know, the many twists and turns that a football game brings about the natural adversities, but also to see these kids celebrate. That's what it's all about. And uh, no, I'm not going into <laughs> dancing, uh, no dancing moves or anything like that. They're pretty good. It's just great to be a part of. You know, there's nothing better also than a winning locker room, is there? No it's question. Such a great thing. You know, and singing the fight songs, singing Rocky Top, and all those things, and it's a great illustration of what it takes to win, and all the hard work and effort that these young men have put together, and then to be able to come in the locker room and celebrate as a football family is very, very special. Such a special night for this Tennessee team, and especially the Tennessee seniors. Rick Russo has a profile on this very special senior class. As the old saying goes, time flies when you're having fun and the last four years at Tennessee have flown by for these Vol seniors. I think as I came in here, a little young kid, man, and I was like 230, 240 coming in here, I had no idea what I was gonna do. Played three different positions, and I don't know, I mean, it's just been, it's just been an experience. I feel like I've, I've grown so much from it. I mean, just leadership standpoint, toughness standpoint, and just, I mean, just being prepared for life, I think. It definitely flies by. It seemed like yesterday I was getting dropped off by my mom and started college and now here I am. I remember my first day when I moved here and it feels like that was yesterday, so it's definitely gone fast. There's no question, memories are molded from experiences and emotions. And for these young men, there have not been a shortage of memories on Rocky Top. Well, there's a lot of good memories. The best game was last year's South Carolina game, obviously beating a top ranked opponent, as well as my home state's team or whatever. So that's probably the best game, like my most memorable game. I like South Carolina this year because it, it's nothing like winning because in the locker room, I mean, everybody was dancing, partying. I mean, it was a it was a great comeback. I mean, we was down by a lot and it showed that we can actually make it through a lot of adversity during a game and uh, it showed that we were a really, a, a really a great team. The brotherhood developed within a football team is special because unlike the game, the bonds made within that brotherhood will last a lifetime. Well, really, I'm going to miss playing with my teammates because I know every time I'm on the field, I have a little anxiety. And sometimes I might look to my left and to my right and see like Kev Sutton or Kirk Majid. They get me excited and get me ready to play. Well, I'll definitely take some of the connections and friendships I've made with guys on the team. You know, always the whole o line, you know, no, nobody could ever separate us. You know, whether it's the old OOP with, you know, Carson Anderson, Darren Gooch, Juwan James, Dallas Thomas, or if it's the new guys like Coleman Thomas, you know, Ray Rollerson, Marquise Pears, you know, a guy I've been friends with for a long time just through here. And I, you know, I'll just never forget those guys and never kind of lose that, you know, kind of sense of connection we had and camaraderie that we had while we played here. It's been a, it's been a great ride, man. I mean, with my teammates, with, with all the seniors that, uh, that stay here, I mean, just playing for playing for them and, and playing for myself, and I know it's, it's just been special. For the Butch Jones Show, I'm Rick Russo. Coach, each senior class is very, very special. What will you take from the senior class? Resiliency, perseverance, 
and uh, to be able to reward them with a bowl game now, and to be able to have a bowl ring for many, many years to come when we talk about that bounding and binding this football team together, and it's all about a brotherhood. So just the resiliency and the leadership, but also the welcoming of all the inordinate amount of freshmen, and they've been a rock and stability for us, not just for this year, but last year as well, for two solid years. Very special senior class. Congratulations to all of them for helping this Tennessee team get to a bowl game. Now let's go to the media match with Sarah Mitchell. where today we'll show you some of the best posts in social media to finish out the regular season. Thanks for all of your help in making this an enjoyable segment on The Butch Jones Show. Let's first start with Monica, who posted a few pictures of some of her favorite memories at Vol Calls with Bob Kessling and Coach Jones, plus her game day friends. There were several engagements on Rocky Top this season, and we want to congratulate this newly engaged couple, Hoyt and your lovely bride. And little Brooks arrived just in time to see the Vols finish their regular season game. Bev already has him dressed in the best, orange and white. Last week on social media, you poured out your love and support for VFL Eric Berry. Use hashtag BerryStrong to show your support. Vol Nation is behind you, Eric. Check out how these Tennessee fans decorated their Thanksgiving table with none other than a UT-themed gingerbread house. And there's nothing like a victory to finish out the season and send us to a bowl game. Here's what members of Team 118 posted after the win. We have thoroughly enjoyed seeing all of your posts on social media this season, and we can't wait to show them off again next year. Don't forget to follow the official Twitter and Instagram of Tennessee football at vol underscore football. Don't go away. The Butch Jones Show will be right back. Kick off your game day with Tailgate Tennessee. Located in Circle Park, Tailgate Tennessee is one block from Neyland Stadium and offers premium tailgate packages with private tents, TVs, food, and much more. For more information, visit tailgatetennessee.com. Presented by Dish and Orca Coolers. Time now for Fueling Tennessee, presented by Humana, your health partner for life. So Ethan, now that Thanksgiving is over, it's time for Christmas parties, family gatherings, that sort of thing, right? Yeah. So what are the types of foods that are usually at family gatherings? My family typically goes with like apple crisp, um, some leftover pumpkin pie. So stuff that's pretty high fat, high sugar, that sort of thing, yeah. right? Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a make your own oatmeal as a side dish. So it sounds kind of weird because we think of oatmeal as a breakfast food, right? Yeah. Well, here what we have today are a bunch of different items that we can use to make our own oatmeal. So, for example, um, say you like peanut butter banana. So we can do peanut butter banana oatmeal. I have a tropical one where you can do coconut and pineapple, a s'mores oatmeal. So you can do marshmallows, some chocolate chips, and some um, graham cracker crumbs, and then just your basic toppings that most people have. So here's a question for you. You look like you're 12. Do you have to sit at the kids' table? Oh, uh, no, I do not. No, and they don't make I got you... my braces off my shoes. That's here. good. Uh, That's great. I'm so lying. you actually moved up to the big people table, table right? <laughs> yeah. Get a bowl of oatmeal, and I want you to go ahead and pick the different toppings that you want. And I also have pumpkin here, so if you want to Keep it more in the holiday uh, spirit. You can do pumpkin with some cinnamon and brown sugar. Maybe mix that together. If right. you do this, I'll do pumpkin. You'll you do pumpkin. pumpkin. Deal. And this that I'm using is actually steel cut oats. So with that, it's a four to one ratio. So one cup of oats and you have to have four cups of water or milk. I use milk just so I know I'm getting more protein, more calcium, that sort of thing. This looks good. All right, I'm gonna try the s'mores. That's actually really good. That's really good. Good job, Ethan. Yeah. Anyway, so this is an idea, an alternative idea to some of the high fat, high sugar foods that you have during the good old holiday parties. Coach, you talk about sudden change. Now your football team, for the first time, has to worry about what they eat over the holidays and uh, not stock it up on a bunch of food over Christmas and going home and seeing their family and friends. That's a big thing. Well, it's a great challenge, and I know Miss Allison <laughs> relishes in that challenge, and she'll make sure our players do a great job of that. And from Thanksgiving now to Christmas and the holidays, 
creeping in on us. We have to really watch what we continue to put in our bodies as we do every day. And we're on top of it in terms of our sports science department. Because you still have to stay in condition during this next month. And that's sometimes a very tough team for some, for, tough thing for some teams to do. Well, you're exactly right because we're now managing our end of our classes in examinations and finishing strong academically and we won't practice for a number of days so they have to make sure that what they put in their bodies will guide them in moving forward when we start bowl preparation. Each week of course here on the Butch Jones Show we talk about one of the young players on the Tennessee team. Danny Kleppinger has a profile of Tennessee middle linebacker Jakob Johnson. Growing up in Stuttgart, Germany, Jakob Johnson found a passion for football but he says there's a big difference between the German and American game. Johnson says the offensive schemes are the main difference, as well as the equipment available to the athletes. In Germany, you either have to buy your own equipment, your own helmet, your own pad, or you borrow one from the team. My helmet was uh, from, I think, 1994 or something. I had to, I had to patch my pad up with like uh, duct tape before every game and stuff. Johnson's dream is to play under the bright lights of the NFL stage. But first, he knew he had to find a college in America that could prepare him for that goal. I wrote an email to every single FBS defensive coordinator and linebacker coach in, uh, in America, like every single school. I, can, I got proof of that. And I got like four replies or something, but they basically all said, um, come to America and prove yourself over here. Johnson moved in with relatives in Florida for his senior year of high school. It was there that Tennessee took notice of the six foot four linebacker from Germany. Now, after a long journey, Jakob Johnson is the starting middle linebacker for the Tennessee Volunteers. When we first talked in the spring, I guess, uh, I didn't know what was, uh, what was about to embark on me or whatever. I didn't, I didn't know what training camp was gonna feel like uh, going through all these practices. But I think that now that, now that I'm through that, I'm. I'm settled down here. I know what to expect. I know, I know what the game feels like. The confidence Johnson has gained throughout the season has helped him step into a leadership role as a true freshman. That's really the, 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 the main challenge at middle linebacker is that you got to make all the calls. You got to basically be the, the quarterback of the defense. And uh, I just felt like that if, if I can play my role, if I can get our guys lined up, uh, guys like Kurt, guys like Cam, they're going to go out there and make, make plays. Um, so that's, that's my mindset. Reporting for the Butch Jones Show, I'm Danny Kleppinger. Coach Jacob was another one of those guys kind of thrown in the fire, and he's really played well. Well, he was, and he's responded. And not only is he a true freshman, but really, he's really the equivalent of probably a high school senior. He's had, only had one football here in the States. So really working on his football IQ, his football intelligence, the physicality that's associated with being a Mike linebacker in the SEC, Jakob continues to do a great job. And again, he's from Stuttgart, Germany. How much football did he play over there? Well, he played a lot of football. One of the neat things this year was actually his coaches from Germany came and spent a week with us and watched practice, showered us with gifts and hats. So I have more Stuttgart Germany football t-shirts and hats than anyone I think in the United States. But they're very, very proud of him and very rightfully so. Did they speak German? Did they understand English? Both. Oh, so Both. you could communicate. Them. Exactly. Did right. you learn any German? No, uh, you were in the season, so <laughs> I just I struggle with English to begin with. So. <laughs> gotcha. When we come back, we'll talk about what the players have to be thankful for here on the Butch Jones Show. Time out to check the stats. Brought to you by Dish. Bowl games are a reward to a football team for their regular season accomplishments. Tennessee teams throughout history have treated their fans to some postseason action on numerous occasions. Check the stats. The Tennessee Volunteers have made 49 bowl appearances in the program's history, placing them fourth in the NCAA record book for bowl games played. Check the stats. Never miss a moment of vol action. Watch live TV wherever you are. Learn more at dish.com forward slash ball. Catch the ball on Dish. The Butch Jones Show is being delivered by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Visit thenewlogistics.com. By Hyundai, proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. By Eastman Chemical Company, promoting sustainability. Remember, good sports always recycle. 
and buy TRH Health Plans. We've got you covered. Get a rate quote online at trh.com or at your local Tennessee Farm Bureau office. This Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for uh, my family and all the, the, the big opportunity that I've been blessed with of coming here to Tennessee and being a Tennessee ball. Well, my parents, they've given me a lot and I'm very blessed to have them in my life and very thankful for them. They definitely have turned me into the person I am today. Well, I'm thankful for obviously being a part of a great program like the University of Tennessee. And obviously the number one thing I'm thankful for is my family, uh, the support that uh, I've always had. I'm most thankful for um, in this program, you know, just the coach staff and everything they've done for me. The family and the, and the bond and the brotherhood that we have with the team, never abandon each other and we always have each other's back. Uh, I'd say my family, my wife is expecting and we're, we're certainly really excited about that. The people that are around us here at UT, Tennessee's a special place and all the people here make it, make it that. Coach, I know one of the rewarding things about your job is to see young people turn into young adults. Well, coaching is creating change and positive change, and that's one of the great rewards of coaching. And this football team, this football program is changing minute by minute, day by day, and uh, it's great to be a part of We have a long way to go, but just very, very proud again, Bob, of all the individuals associated with our family. I know you got to be very proud, too, of how these young guys, especially the freshmen, laid it on the line took coaching, did whatever they needed to do to help you get to this bowl game? Well, we've asked a lot of them. And, uh, you know, from academics to, you know, playing in the SEC as true freshmen, doing the extra in the weight room to be able to be able to compete in a very high level. And, again, this football team shows its resiliency. It's a very, very close-knit group, and they hold each other accountable. And their standards and their expectations are very high. All right, what happens now over the next week or so with your football team? Well, we're going to finish strong academically. That's the most important thing is it's all about academics. We'll go through final exams, and then we'll go through recruiting, and then we'll start practicing on the weekends. And then uh, week two, kind uh, of once we get off this week, we'll start a full-fledged uh, in-season routine again. But they'll have a few days off to kind of catch up academically, uh, hit those exams hard, but also get their, their bodies back, which we need to get our health back in a hurry. Well, you like to get anxious, get the bowl preparation started, but you don't know until next Sunday night who you're even playing. Next Sunday night will be a very special night. We're going to have a team event, and it's very important for our players to understand the magnitude and the relevance of playing in great bowl games, and we're looking forward to that. And the SEC picks where you're going. You've got some input, but they basically this year make the selections. It's the first year. It's a little bit of a change, and the SEC will place teams in different bowl games. But we also get a chance to kind of speak our minds, speak our opinions, along with the bowl representatives as well. Well, the fact that Tennessee's going is so special. Congratulations, Coach, to you and the players and the staff. Good season. Thank you. Butch Jones, his comments as Tennessee wins over Vanderbilt. We'll show you highlights next here on the Butch Jones Show. Fans, join the Vol Network at Calhoun's on the River for Vol Calls. Talk Tennessee football with Butch Jones and the Vol Network's Bob Kessling every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Vol Calls, the official statewide coaches call-in show for UT Athletics. side and he's going to be hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Back to throw pressure and has to get rid of it as Kurt Majid blitz dumped him. Wobbly kick. Sutton is going to trace it back to the 25 yard line. Looks for some running room. Brings it to the 40. Cuts it to midfield. Sutton down the near sideline to the 40. He's going to go to the 30 and he's going to go all the way for a Tennessee touchdown. 75 yards for Cameron Sutton on the punt return. <laughs> Here's a fake a handoff and Dobbs takes off around the left side to the 20, to the 10, dives for the pylon, and he's out of bounds, just short of the end zone. 37 yards, middle of the field, into the wind, spinning toward the uprights, and that kick is good. Sets up. Going to fire long for the end zone. That pass is going to be intercepted in the end zone. Justin Coleman 
Dobbs, play fake, back to throw. They're chasing him. Dobbs takes off right, looks, fires long. A man wide open at the 25-yard line. He's got it. Making a move is Pig Howard down to the Vanderbilt 17-yard line. Trying to take the lead in this 10-10 game. Dobbs, play fake, keeps it, rolls left, dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Flush from the pocket, fires the ball long down the sideline. Incomplete and intercepted, but out of bounds. Todd Kelly Jr., what a catch. And more importantly, keeping that toe down as he was dragging it going out of bounds. Dobbs in the shotgun. Takes a handoff, quarterback draw up the middle of the five, into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Josh Dobbs from eight yards out. Second down and a bunch. Back to throw, Robinette winds up over the middle. That pass intercepted on a diving attempt at the 43-yard line by Brian Randolph. Robinette back to throw, winds up, fires, deep out, incomplete, incomplete. Tennessee has stopped Vanderbilt on this drive with 23 seconds to go. Tennessee gets the ball back, and the Volunteers are going bowling. The Volunteers win their sixth game tonight. It wasn't easy, but the Volunteers play defense down the stretch to turn back Vanderbilt. And the final score tonight from Nashville, Tennessee 24, Vanderbilt 17. Now joined by John Bryce of VolQuest.com. John, give us a kind of put this in perspective, what this win and getting to a bowl game really means for this Tennessee program. Well, oh, it's huge. It keeps Tennessee relevant for the next month. It's the fruit of a lot of hard labors over the course of this season that really began back in January. Uh, and even beforehand, I still remember Mike Bajakian telling me all of his quarterbacks were in his office after the Kentucky game last year, meeting with him, wanting to know what the next step would be. So I think this is a culmination of a lot of hard work. It's also a bit of a dangling carrot because the Vols know there's a lot more out there. And now the coaching staff, they've got a week, uh, basically just kind of get organized because you don't know who you're playing. And then then you find out next week when then you start putting together a kind of a game plan and a, and a bowl practice plan. Yeah, it's a time for a lot of people to recharge their batteries. Not the coaches, they'll be out recruiting. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But it is a, a time for the team to focus on academics, close strong. I mean, Butch Jones clearly believes in the, in the entire environment of the college life. And he, he has the APR stuff written into his contract. So he wants to make sure that his players close this semester strong in the classroom so that they have the opportunity to close it strong on the field. I thought it was interesting talking with Matt Dar, who just had a splendid game, really his best two games were his final two regular season games at Tennessee. He was around when the Vols went to the Music City Bowl in 2010, Bobby. He was redshirting that year. He said Knoxville was really unique then, and it's the time that it's great to bond as a team. He said, look, we're the only guys on campus. Everybody else gets to go home for Christmas break. The basketball teams are traveling, doing some things like that. We're the guys on campus. We get to bond. We get to relish in one another's company. And he said, look, the bowl practices are almost more fun than the bowl game itself. And also you look at uh, Matt Darby being a senior. Marlon Lane, another senior, really contributed, especially when Jalen Hurd went out. And he, he's a program guy. He's a guy who completely turned around his life under Butch Jones. Nearly wasn't with the program for the 2013 season. Handled his business and, you know, accepted his role this year. He was not the lead back for very long in this football season. And he only started the first three or four games. But he never complained. He still battled on the practice field. He's still been a leader in the running backs meeting room. I know Robert Gillespie's told me that when I visited visited with him just about Marlon's role and how he's embraced it. I think that's significant. You've seen a tremendous buy-in from players of all ages on this roster, and I think that's pretty unique, Bob. But the seniors who stayed really had to buy in because they had chances to leave. Oh, they, they had chances to leave. They had chances to, you know, fold it up or, or, you know, mail it in. They never did that. None of those guys in that senior class did that. Even a Justin Worley, who uh, was out there celebrating with his teammates Saturday night after the Vanderbilt win, I thought that was substantial. And, again, it goes to show you the buy-in, the investment that all these guys have. It's not lip service when you can see it so clearly on their faces in those moments of joy. Big night for the Tennessee football team beating Vanderbilt, going to a bowl game. And we'll ask the coach next here on the Butch Jones Show. It's time to announce the AutoZone player of the game. Get in the zone, AutoZone. In the zone for Tennessee was Cameron Sutton. Sutton returned a punt 76 yards for a touchdown in the first quarter, putting the balls on the scoreboard for the first time. The return marked Tennessee's first punt return for a touchdown since Cordero Patterson returned a punt for a TD against Vanderbilt in 2012. Congratulations to Cameron Sutton, our AutoZone player of the game. For the auto parts, accessories, and advice you need, get in the zone. AutoZone. 
The Butch Jones Show is being brought to you by Vol Network Home Entertainment. From Pat Summit to Peyton Manning, Vol Network Home Entertainment has the greatest moments on DVD. By Humana, over 50 years of experience in the healthcare industry. Humana, your partner in health. By the natural gas utilities and pipeline companies in Tennessee. Natural gas. And by the Tennessee Education Lottery. Proud to have raised over $3 billion for education programs in Tennessee. It's time now for Ask the Coach, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, a proud corporate sponsor of the Vols. Visit them online at academy.com. Welcome back to Ask the Coach, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Today, the special guest is Director of Player Personnel, Mr. Bob Welton. Welcome, Bob. Thanks, Sarah. Glad to be here. All right, Bob, your first question comes from Bill Owens, and he asks, how important is it to build those relationships with in-state student athletes? Well, I can say this, is that every staff meeting, every staff meeting, we first talk about the in-state players. We go down each kid, and each coach has to give an update, and that's daily. We talk about them daily. We don't do that with anybody else on the board except Tennessee kids. So obviously that's a priority. Then the other thing is I think what's important is the connections with the high schools and the high school coaches. You know, one of the things Coach Jones has done a great job with because he's not from Tennessee is I think he's done a great job of bridging some contacts, bridging some of that gap that, you, that was here when he got here with the state of Tennessee. And I think last year's recruiting class obviously I think showed that we're, we're putting a fence up around the state and we want these kids to stay in state. We want to win with Tennessee kids. And going off of kind of that, that really high recruiting class last year, Sam Hayes uh, points out that we had the top five recruiting class last year. Will you talk about um, how we get those top-notch players despite maybe the, the season-ending record? It starts with the head coach. You know, Coach Jones is our best recruiter. He's our, top, our hardest working recruiter. And I think that trickles down to everybody in the department uh, from, our, from our nutritionalists to our strength staff to our team chaplain. I mean, they all play a part. I mean, this, is, this really is a, a group effort, a team effort when we recruit these kids. And I think when they come here, they feel that we care. We care about them on the field, but also we're going to take care of them off the field and after football. You know, Anton Davis does a great job, obviously, with the VFL program. So I think the parents and the kids feel like if I come to this place, not only can I play football at a great university, I can get a degree, but also when I'm done playing, I know this isn't over. Regular season has concluded. Will you talk about your next, uh, let's say, three months before National Signing Day in February? What, is your day, what do your days look like? Well, there's no sleep, i tell you that. Uh, that's for sure. Um, a lot of chaos. You know, the, the best thing that we have going for us at Tennessee is we're, we'll have another year of a lot of mid-years. And that helps because you really don't have to recruit these kids for two more weeks. And then they're here in school and, and you can kind of, you don't forget about them, but you don't necessarily have to worry about them going somewhere else. You know, you have them, they're Tennessee balls, they're all in school. And so, you know, what they'll do is the coaches are all on the road. They're on the road now. They're tireless. You know, at this time of year, they know whatever I ask them, they need to do it. And so that's really for the next three months is exactly what we're doing. And not to mention that you also have the 2016 kids to recruit. <laughs> you know, people forget about that sometimes, but, you know, that's, that's part of my job is, is, you know, the coaches need to work on these guys. But, you know, we're already talking about 16s, 17s. I mean, those are, that's what I spend most of my day on now, to be honest with you, is trying to coordinate and collect all that information and those names. Um, so it just never ends. It's, it's a vicious cycle, that's for sure. Well, you certainly have your, your plate full and a lot to deal with, so we'll let you get back to work, but thank you for your time, and good luck. I appreciate it, Sarah, and uh, Vol Nation signing day is going to be really special this year, I can tell you that. John, it's interesting. Fans talk about where they want to go. Coaches also strategically want to go someplace that's going to help them in recruiting. Well, and the big thing, as Bob talked about what the staff has to do over the next month, the big thing is getting those extra bowl practices means some guys maybe can show up on the UT campus on, on unofficial visits and checking out practice and you can't get guys onto your campus enough and the other thing that it really does that bolsters this program um, from a coaching staff standpoint and what it wants to do is it makes the Vols relevant the entire next month so when those coaches are traveling all over the country and there were coaches staying in Nashville Saturday night after the game Bob to begin their recruiting work now they have something tangible to point to. Now they can say, well, we're in the mix for these bowls. We might play these opponents. We've got these bowl practices. It's very, very important. It also depends on where you go. Then when you start your bowl preparations at the site, if you've got recruits in that area, they can come. 
Absolutely, and if Tennessee can you know, stay in state and, and do its bowling somewhere in the state of Tennessee, that's an even bigger bonus for the Vols, but it does. It's, it's a recruiting element in so many aspect, aspects. Yes, it's a reward for the current team, and those guys work very hard for it, but it's also very rewarding for what they're trying to do, recruiting and laying the foundation for future teams. When we come back, we'll look ahead here on the Butch Jones Show. Time now for the Tennessee Top 5, brought to you by Hyundai. At the Tennessee 32-yard line, McCurry back to throw. Sets up. Going to fire long for the end zone. That pass is going to be intercepted in the end zone. Dobbs, play fake, keeps it, rolls left, dies for the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. And Robinette back to throw. Looks. Flush from the pocket. Fires the ball long down the sideline. Todd Kelly, Jr., what a catch. Touchdown, Tennessee. Looks for some running room. Breaks it to the 40. Cuts it to midfield. Sunk down the near sideline to the 40. He's going to go to the 30, and he's going to go all the way for a Tennessee touchdown. 75 yards for Cameron Sutton on the punt return. Well, you can just tell in the voice, so excited about getting to a bowl game, extending the season. They've been talking about six wins for so long, bowl game for so long, and now it's finally here. Yeah, they've been breaking huddles on the practice field, breaking huddles in, in pregame warm-ups, saying six, six, six. It's been a, a, such a huge point of emphasis for this program, not just the last couple of weeks, but all season long. They, they very candidly said they had written down in the preseason that they wanted to go to a bowl, and now this is the realization of that. And again, it's a substantial step forward for the program. You know, on the team last week against Missouri when you when you lose that game and you thought uh oh but the team stayed focused they didn't it wasn't a big setback for them they stayed on this goal of getting six wins and and really laid it on the line I thought against Vanderbilt I can't remember Bob when we've seen a Tennessee team flash more resilience over the course of a season but particularly late in this season starting with the rally at South Carolina and all that the Vols had to overcome to win that game and keep bowl hopes alive and uh, they've just done so much and showed so much character, I think, by and large, as a, an entire unit. And they really, again, bought in. I know it sounds cliche to keep saying that, but you don't get to six wins under these circumstances without that genuine buy-in, without the injuries and everything this team has had to overcome. So, again, don't know where Tennessee's going bowling? Go to utsports.com. They'll have the latest information. Stay tuned to this Vol Network TV station. Also, they'll have the latest information when and where Tennessee's going to be bowling. But we do know the Volunteers got that sixth win against Vanderbilt and will be playing in the postseason. John, thanks for being with us all season long. It's been, been a great. pleasure, Bob. It's one of my favorite things, so thanks. Great. John Bryce from VolQuest.com. For Coach Butch Jones, I'm Bob Kessling. Thanks for being with us all season long and supporting Tennessee football here on the Butch Jones Show. This has been a presentation of the Vol Network, produced by IMG, the world's premier sports, media, and entertainment company, produced at the Huster Broadcast Center.